people who cross the channel make up a small proportion of net migration figures, but it's what they symbolise which can anger the public, and that's a lack of control. Stopping the boats is a key Rishi Sunak pledge, and in Dover last week, he said his plans are having an impact. For the first time, numbers are down. So this year, January to May, the numbers crossing are down by 20%. But just this morning, the Home Secretary acknowledged the challenges. The numbers keep rising because so the, the boats keep off. coming. And that is uh, the flow of casework. And that is what we are also working on to reduce. So with high numbers crossing the channel in recent days, what's the full picture? This pink line shows the number of people who are detected arriving in the UK via small boats every month in 2022. The peak was in July at around 8,700 and a yearly total of nearly 46,000. For this year, there's only data up to May, but so far, more than 7,600 migrants have made the journey, which is around 2,000 less compared to the same time in 2022. The Migration Observatory, which analyses data in a non-partisan way, says it's too soon to say whether tougher policies, such as the proposed illegal migration bill, are having an effect. To try and apply the idea that it's all about policy to the reasons that numbers have gone down is problematic. And as I say, it's, it's, it's likely to be premature. It's better to look at this over a longer period of time. We've seen some big numbers of people crossing the channel in recent days. The weather is obviously warm and sunny. What impact do you think that could have in the coming weeks? It depends on so many other factors. We don't know, for example, whether or not we're going to see more Albanians start to come to the UK again or whether or not that's something that has now been dealt with. Generally speaking, international experience suggests that deterrence policies on their own don't tend to have that much of an impact. The asylum application backlog has been on the rise since 2016, with more than 166,000 people awaiting a decision at the end of last year. While they wait, often in hotels, they're mostly unable to work. This all costs £6 million every day. Louise Calvi has worked with asylum seekers for 16 years and regularly visits asylum hotels got families living in, in, in one small room, kids trying to do their homework. Um, you've got people sharing uh, rooms that weren't built to be shared. I think the, the biggest overriding concern in those hotels, though, is the utter desperation that people are feeling. People are living like that for years. The government would say that it's going to be moving thousands of asylum seekers into other types of accommodation, such as barges, and away from expensive hotels, which obviously cost the taxpayer. What do you make of that plan? So if you wanted to save money, you would simply process those asylum decisions quickly. It doesn't take a long time to see that someone from Afghanistan needs status. I think this is about the performance of hostility. Barges aren't cheap, barges aren't free, and the, the consequence of putting someone on a barge, the impact on their ability to integrate, to find work, to learn English, their health outcomes are all disastrous for everyone. The combination of new arrivals and a large asylum backlog impacts local authorities. The Conservative leader of Kent County Council says it can negatively affect education, housing and public health, as well as community cohesion. All authorities are very, very conscious of, um, the, of the pressures on us. We, are, we will always seek to discharge the wide range of responsibilities we've got. Uh, as I say, whether it is in relation to asylum seeking, whether it is in relation to other schemes such as the Afghan scheme and uh, homes for Ukraine. But clearly, uh, any level of reduction in pressure will help to ease the, uh, the challenges that local authorities face. Today, a crowded boat carrying migrants capsized off the coast of Greece with at least 79 dead. The government argues its tough policies would save lives while reducing the unprecedented strain on the UK's asylum system. But with many more channel crossings expected over the summer, there are genuine fears about how much more strain the system can take.